have a wonderful um, afternoon uh, for you today. Our activity today uh, will be led by Dr. Liz Choi. She's going to be talking to us a little bit um, about finding our sources of meaning. And then we're going to spend some time uh, working actually on a project that will help us uh, connect in to that concept in, in a little bit of a deeper way. So I, I would like to introduce you to Dr. Liz Choi. Some of you may know her. She is a neuropsychologist here at UCSF Neuro-Oncology. She works for the Neurocognitive Clinic. Um, she works primarily with our patients. Um, some of you may be familiar with the Neurocognitive Clinic. This is something that we've um, started at, in the Neuro-Oncology Department probably five or six years now ago. Uh, with a team of dedicated neuropsychologists and health psychologists to support our patients um, with some uh, neuro, neuropsychological assessment and, and neurological uh, neurocognitive rehab to help people get back to work and, um, and families sort of understand some of the vulnerabilities to improve their quality of life. Um, so Liz, I'm, I might have missed a few things. I, I might, anything else you want to add to that? Or? So there's a common question where people would ask, like, how do we come to see you? <laughs> um, so we take referrals from neural oncologists. So um, you know, if you're interested in our services, uh, please speak with um, your loved one's doctor, and then uh, we can make that happen. Great. And when we talk about services, just so that's clear, so this group's main goal is to really help our patients and their families identify um, and figure out how to navigate specific cognitive vulnerabilities or cognitive changes that might have occurred uh, in your loved one. And then think about some strategies, whether it is return to work or um, return to the family, or even sometimes help you caregivers uh, know how to navigate some of these uh, behavioral and cognitive changes that are happening in your family, in your family member. Um, in addition to that, we do have a few health psychologists, so people who are really struggling with their adjustment to diagnosis, which is not uncommon as people navigate um, coming to terms with this diagnosis. We have people who can help uh, your loved one with that. And so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Liz for the afternoon. Thanks. Thank you, Margareta. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon, everyone. The topic that I'm going to share with everyone today is finding our sources of meaning in life. So my sharing today is stemming from an approach that I use with, with my patients um, with brain cancer um, in the health psychology space, and that is called meaning-centered psychotherapy. This is an intervention designed by Dr. William Breitbart and his colleagues at Memorial Sloan Kettering. And it is based on the work um, of um, Dr. Viktor Frankl, whom you might know or have heard of, um, who is the author of a famous book, Man's Search for Meaning. Now through my work, I have found that um, when my patients have the space to focus on the importance of creating, experiencing, and keeping a sense of meaning in life, they are able to have a reduced feelings of despair and hopelessness in their cancer survivorship. And the reason why I'm bringing this up in our caregiver retreat um, program today is because recently there are also a lot of emerging studies from the psychology literature showing that um, this intervention is also very helpful to people who are caring for someone with cancer. Um, so we thought the discussion of meaning is very valuable today because number one, we know that we can cope better by finding and creating a sense of meaning and purpose in life. And number two, in today's space, we encourage you to learn about the major sources of meaning in life for you that I'm gonna share in a couple of slides later as a caregiver, as a care partner, and also as a person as the whole. And number three, we hope that in the sharing and an upcoming creative activities that we've prepared today, that you can find new ways to face and overcome challenges in the caregiving journey. Okay, 
So what is meaning? Um, Viktor Frankl, you know, he, he came from an, an existential school of thought in psychiatry. And what he believes about human existence, every one of us here in this room, is that all life and all humans, all, all life has meaning. And we derive meaning at any given time, and we are the creator of meaning. And as humans, our desire to find meaning is a basic motivation for our behavior, our choices, and our decisions. So we are people and we are beings that are being motivated by meaning, purpose, and values to live life. And these are also the things that help us respond to life's difficult questions and tasks. And he says this is like the fundamental concept of being human. And so with this capacity, as humans, we all have um, something called the freedom of will. We always have the chance to choose our response, no matter how dire a situation can be, how difficult the circumstances, and how little control we may have over external situations. We have the ability to choose internally how we live and find purpose and how we respond. Meaning is unique to each person, um, to every one of us here. It can mean very different things to each of us here. And here, um, Viktor Frankl, he actually drew reference from a famous quote from a composer and philosopher, Nietzsche. And he said, he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. So essentially what he's saying is the why of life, like meaning and purpose. These are the things that pulls us through difficult times. And, and he believes that when we have a purpose and meaning, we can endure anything, and that's the how. So we can overcome obstacles and challenges by having a meaning or a purpose. And for, you know, and for all of us, meaning can live in many forms. It can be in the form of responsibilities to ourselves. It can live um, as a responsibility to the people that you care. It could be in a form of you know, a connection to your community and to the wider world outside. Some of us may ask, like, are we living the life that we're supposed to be living? And there's really is no good answer to that, but we believe, but we believe that the exploration of meaning allows us to examine our own lives maybe how the caregiver role changed the way we look at the world, how we feel, um, and kind of also look out for areas of change and where, um, and if there is a space for growth on a personal level as well. So it is important for us to remember that we are the authors of meaning in our lives and we can find what makes life worth living. So the experience of having a loved one diagnosed with brain cancer, seeing them <clears throat> go through treatment and providing care for someone with cancer can be a source of great suffering. And we know that suffering can sometimes lead to feelings of disconnection. They can be in the forms of existential questions. We might have those questions ourselves. Um, and it could also come in a form of having medical problems or you know, our own psychological distress. So, um, we find that sometimes when we engage in the caregiving role for a long, long time, some of us may feel <laughs> disconnected from the elements of the identities that you once prioritized. Maybe um, there's a disconnection with important activities. Maybe there's a disconnection with um, your job, your employment, your community. Maybe there could be a disconnection with the relationships that you used to share with your loved ones as well. So there is a feeling of disconnection and people feel lost. However, we also believe that by identifying the sources of meaning in your life, what you will find or you know, will explore or have explored can help you get reconnected to the person that you genuinely are within. So today we invite you to reflect and think about what has been most meaningful and most important to you, um, perhaps in our retreat today, so that you can feel connected to an aspect of yourself and that you can, that can help you make a change perhaps um, in perspective when you walk out of this room today. 
Um, for instance, um, we may find meaning through the choices that we make. Maybe it's the attitude that you take towards the caregiving role. Maybe it could be through a creative endeavor, like maybe creating new ways to provide care for others and for yourself. Maybe it could be through a new experience um, perhaps gaining a new appreciation of your relationship and connection with the loved ones in facing life's mortality. So ultimately, we hope that through identifying and finding meaning and purposes, we can experience growth as opposed to despair and distress. So the question is, how do we find meaning and where do we find that, right? So in meaning-centered psychotherapy, what William Breitbart put forth um, three basic sources of meaning that we can reference um, to find meaning. Okay. And they're historical, attitudinal, and creative and experiential. And I'm going to go through each of them. Okay. The first one is a historical sense of meaning. So this morning, um, in our group discussion, we, we touched on this concept. We, we talked about life as a story, as a narrative, and it's a legacy. Um, there's a past, there's a present, and there's a future. And when we think about meaning and purpose, they also have a history. We are who we are today because of what happened in the past. And there are things that were passed on to us from older generations. In your life, you can see it as a story that flows from past, present, and future. And in caregiving, they can include maybe your previous experience in watching how others provide care to your friends and family member. Um, it could also come in the forms of the traditions in your family that maybe promote commitment to tending to people who are sick. And so there are, so we are beings that are influenced by our culture, our family values, our religion, and many more things. And what about the present? The present is the one that you're living right now. Um, your present caregiving responsibility is the actual engaging in the caregiving role um, where you're living out the values that your past has passed on to you. And the future can refer to how others view your role as a care partner, caregiver, perhaps it's your children, another family member, uh, or maybe a coworker, a neighbor, seeing you as a role model in caring for other people. So we say the action of thinking about your story, um, thinking about the influences and the impact in a coherent way can generate meaning for you. All right, the second source of meaning that we can reference is kind of thinking about the attitudinal source of meaning. So attitude is like the ability or the freedom to choose how we react to life situations, okay? Um, it can be an approach that you used, an action that you took, a phrase or a song that you internalize that motivates you and keeps you going when things are really hard. And um, that reminds me of today when uh, during our icebreaker game, like you all shared with each other your superpower, right? And so I think that's also a great form of the attitude, right? Like um, maybe someone say like patience or being creative, right? So these are attitudes that can be reflected in that superpower. And it also essentially, it reflects the ways in which you choose to face limitations and challenges. The founder of meaning-centered therapy, William Breitbart, he has a very beautiful quote. He said, life gives us many things. Some appear to be wonderful and some appear to be tragic. Well, what is most important is to utilize our freedom to choose how we respond to what life gives us. So we say by reflecting on um, how one faces challenges can be an incredible um, meaningful experience. And we know that typically becoming a caregiver is not generally perceived as a choice. However, we invite you to think about how and what extent you choose to engage in the role of being a caregiver as well. 
For example, what was the attitude that you put forth when um, you know that you're not able to make advanced plans, right? And what was the attitude that you use when you have to face interruption to your own personal goals and employment? And for some, what was the attitude that you adopted in knowing that there may be li limited amount of time remaining with the loved ones for whom you're care providing care for? So reflecting and identifying our attitudes and our choices we make in life in face of life's difficulties can help us also foster resilience. The third one is a creative and experiential source of meaning. So we all wear many different hats in life. You are someone's child, you might be, you may be someone's parent, a sibling, a neighbor, a coworker, and you are a caregiver. And we draw meanings from all of these identities. And we say creating one's life actually requires a lot of courage and commitment. Um, and engaging in a caregiving role for a loved one who's, who is ill is a great example of an act that requires courage and commitment. So you choosing to come to today's retreat is a great example of making space and time to step away for a while and to focus a little bit on yourself, right? And this also speaks to an area of creativity um, in the terms where, you know, it speaks to the responsibilities that we have to ourselves. Like, how do we continue to create one's life fully, attend to our own needs while providing care to someone with cancer. Experiential source, the second part of this is, you know, it refers to how we connect with the world with our five senses. And as humans, the experience of connectedness with life is essential for survival of all human beings. And we find meaning and we know what speaks to us and what's most important to us when we connect with the world. Okay. I, I remember um, one of my patient's spouse shared with me that through a hug or a very tight hand hold, she feels so connected through love for her husband. I also remember another caregiver shared with me that they felt spending time to just sit down listening to their favorite music using their favorite blankie together, watching sunset in their previous dating spot, just allow them to step away from the present day suffering and be able to appreciate the longevity of the world around them. And they felt it through connecting with another human and to nature or to music. And for some, it can be even in the forms of prayer, like a connection with God and something greater than themselves. So I have shared um, the three sources of meaning here, and you know I'm just going to wrap up um, what I have shared or what I have, you know, learned from the theories of that um, treatment modality. And now I'd just like to maybe shift gears to kind of um, go into our next activity, which is an experiential exercise. And our team has prepared materials for everyone here. Um, I think we're going to do the vision board exercise and we find that or we hope that this activity can allow you to find and reflect and connect to those sources of meaning. Okay, so what is a vision board? Has anybody done a vision board before? Oh, okay. Yeah, so we have a few, but maybe most of us have not, right? Um, a vision board is a great way to create a path for us to connect to our sources of meaning. Um, and there are three steps that we, we, we would do. So number one, which is, um, you know, the first step is to visualize yourself. So in, the, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to put up some questions on the slide that can help kind of guide and um, fa fa facilitate your thinking. It's kind of like tapping into down that memory lane to think about you know what comes up for you um, in the context of meaning and purposes. So you're going to answer the question. That's number one. 
and you're going to gather pictures and images and words that present or represent those answers for you. Um, number two is the creative part. So we're actually going to be very hands-on and we're going to do a lot of arts and craft and we're going to create the board. And then step three, uh, and I think we're going to spend about maybe 30 to 40 minutes or so to create the board. And then we're going to come back together and I'd like you to think about how you would like to use this board for self-care, right? So um, you're not just creating this today, you're actually bringing this back to your habitat. And you're going to think about how is this going to be helpful? How do I utilize what I did and thought and reflected today? And, and then we'll have some small group discussion in each table where you get to share um, you know, with the person beside you um, things that you've come up with. So now that we have um, the, the materials on the table, I'm going to go ahead to share quickly about what we're going to do with those materials. So this exercise is called Capturing Meaningful Moments. So I'd like to invite you to think about and gather experience or moments where life has felt particularly meaningful to you. And then so basing on um, our sources of meaning that we shared just now, um, I'd like you to think about your life story, your attitude towards life's challenges, the way or, the, um, or some of the ways that you hold or held responsibility to yourself and other people, and or things that allow you to feel connected with nature, love, beauty, and humor through your five senses.